Hello and welcome. My name is Rocky Bello and I'm the host of Nigerian History of a Creep, a podcast that explores the rich history of Nigeria and the impact it has had on the world. As somebody who's always been fascinated by African history and culture, I have dedicated my time and energy to sharing the stories in Nigeria's past with a wider audience and to provide a story and um, history for marginalized communities in Nigeria. I have dedicated my time and energy to sharing the stories of Nigeria's past with a wider audience. Through my podcast, I aim to educate and inspire others with the research and knowledge I have gained. In each episode, I delve into different aspects of Nigerian history. From the pre-colonial era to the present day, I cover topics such as the slave trade, colonialism, independence, and the rise of African nationalism. I also discuss the contributions of key figures such as Aziweke, Oolowo, and others, and the impact their legacy has had on the country and I believe the continent as a whole. I believe that by better understanding our past, we can gain a better appreciation for the present and a clearer vision for the future. I'm committed to sharing the stories and perspectives that are often overlooked and to provide a platform for voices and perspectives that are very much marginalized. So join me on this journey as we explore the rich history of Nigeria and the impact it has had on the world. Don't forget to follow me wherever you're listening to this from and for more um, exciting content and updates on my podcast. Today's fun fact is that the oldest known human settlement in West Africa is located in Nigeria at a site called Ibo Ilaru. The site is believed to be the oldest known human settlement in West Africa, with evidence of human occupation dating back at least 13,000 years ago. This makes it an important human location for study of early history of human settlements in the region. Um, philosophers and historians and architects at Iro Ileru have uncovered a wealth of artifacts and fossils, including stones, tools, pottery, and the remains of animals that are hunted and used for food. The site has also yielded the remains of several human skeletons some which exhibit unusual physical characteristics, such as an elongated skulls. Today we'll be talking about Kosoko, the Oba of Benin. Kosoko was born in the late 18th century in Lagos, which was then a small coastal kingdom in what, in what is now known as modern-day Nigeria. He was the prince of Lagos and a member of the Oshidi Tapa ruling dynasty. Kosoko's father was a prominent leader in Lagos, and a powerful member of the ruling dynasty. Kosoko had several siblings, including his older brother, Idewu, who would later become the Oba of Lagos after his father died. As a young man, Kosoko was likely educated in the traditional ways of the Yoruba people, which include the study of religion, history, and language. He would have also been trained in the art of warfare, as Lagos was frequently at war with neighboring kingdoms and tribes. Kosoko's early life was likely one of privilege and power, and he was born into the ruling family of Lagos. However, his later life would be marked by political turmoil and conflict as he vied for power and influence in the kingdom. Kosoko was one of the most prominent slave traders in Lagos in the 19th century. Lagos was a major center for the slave trade in West Africa at the time, and Kosoko was able to capitalize on the lucrative business. He had close ties to the Brazilian community in Lagos, who were also heavily involved in the slave trade. The Brazilian community in Lagos was made up of people of Afro-Brazilian descent who had returned to West Africa after being freed from slavery in Brazil. Many of these individuals had amassed significant wealth and had become influential members of the Lagos society. They were heavily involved in the slave trade and has close ties to the royal family. Kosoko's involvement in the slave trade allowed him to accumulate significant wealth and power. He was able to establish himself as a ruling member and one of the most wealthiest people and most influential individuals in Lagos, and his status as a prince of the royal family only added to his prestige. 
Kosoko's ties to the Brazilian community in Lagos gave him access to valuable information and resources. The Brazilians had knowledge of the uh, Atlantic world, and their experience with international trade gave them a unique perspective on the slave trade. Kosoko was able to leverage this knowledge to his, to his advantage, becoming a successful businessman. Despite his involvement in the slave trade, Kosoko remained a respected member of the Lagos society, and he was known for his intel intelligence and his ability to navigate the complex political landscape of the kingdom. He was also known for his courage and his willingness to stand up for his beliefs, even when um, the face of opposition was at his side. So calm and happy, Kosoko would, leave, would live a good life until 1819, when his father died, and his brother, Idewu, would become king. Idewu, uh, Idewu's reign was very unpopular, and the people of Lagos petitioned the Oba Benin, who had power over Lagos at the time, to remove him from the throne. As a result, Idewu committed suicide, and the kingmakers of Lagos invited Adeli, who was another f uh, family member, to in Bad and who resided in um, Badagri at the time, to return and rule as the Oba of Lagos for a second term. However, Adeli's death in 1837 um, would lead to Aletu Odibo, the most powerful chief in Lagos, to oppose Kosoko's accession to the throne, which he was rightfully, um, technically rightfully, um, a title to since he was the next in line. But Aletu had beef with him, which I'll talk about later. Um, so because of this beef, um, his kid, the kid of Adeli, Ulowole, became the Oba of Lagos. And this sparked a power struggle between Kosoko and Aletu, which eventually led to Kosoko being exiled to Badagri. During his exile, Kosoko continued to assert his claim to the throne of Lagos and opposed the rule of Akitok Atikoye, who was, uh, who was installed as Oba after uh, Oluwoli's death in um, 1841. Kosoko was able to maintain close ties with other um, political chiefs and kingmakers in Lagos, and his presence loomed over large political landscapes in the kingdom. Now, one of the main reasons why Iletu did not support Kosoko was because he married his betrothed wife, which was a slap to the face of Iletu. And he also had a bad repu uh, reputation as a prominent slave trader. The slave trade was highly controversial today, and it was very controversial in Lagos at the time. And many chiefs and kingmakers were opposed to the practice. Kosoko's involvement in the slave trade likely made him an unpopular choice among certain factions in the kingdom. Additionally, Kosoko's opposition to British colonialism and his resistance to the imposition of British authority over the affairs of Lagos also made him dislikable by Iletu. The British were actively seeking to expand their influence in Lagos and other parts of West Africa at the time and anyone who was seen as an obstacle to their goals was viewed with suspicion. Furthermore, there may have been personal animosity between Iletu and Kosoko. The two men likely had a different visions for the future of Lagos, and this may have had a history, um, led to a history of conflict and rivalry. During his time in exile, Kosoko did not remain inactive, no, no, no. Instead, he actively opposed act uh, Atikoye's rule, and he continued to assert his claim to the throne of Lagos. He was able to maintain close ties with the other powerful chiefs and kingmakers in the kingdom, and his presence loomed large over the political landscape. He established himself as a prominent slave trader before his exile, and continued to trade in Lagos during his time away from Lagos. Um, and, you know, he also had close ties with Brazilian communities in Lagos who were involved in the slave trade, and these ties helped him to helped um, him to maintain his influence in the city, but at what cost?
In addition to this involvement in the slave trade, Kosoko also established a base of support in Badagri, where he believed where he was believed to spend most of his time in exile. He had many supporters in his town, and his presence there helped them to stay connected with the political developments in Lagos. However, um, despite being in exile, Kosoko remained a powerful and influential figure in Lagos politics. He continued to assert his claim to the throne and was able to maintain his influence through his ties and other powerful chiefs and his involvement in the slave trade. It was also important to note that Iletu was not the only keymaker in Lagos at the time, and there were likely other factors to play in the succession process. Nevertheless, his opposition to Kosoko played a significant role in shaping the kingdom's affairs at the time. As mentioned earlier, Kosoko opposed the rule of um, Atikoye, who, ruled, who was installed at, as Opa of Lagos after the death of Uluwole in 1841. During his exile, Kosoko remained to assert his claim to the throne and oppose Atikoye's rule from afar. He maintained close ties with other political chiefs in the kingdom and key makers in the kingdom and continued to um, wield significant influence over Lagos politics. Kosoko's opposition to Ak- Ak- um, Akitoye's rule eventually led to confrontation between the two factions. And in 1845, Kosoko supporters launched an attack on Lagos, which was repelled by Atikoye's forces. Kosoko himself did not participate in the, t- in the attack, as he was still in exile at the time. And despite the failure of the attack, Kosoko's supporters continued to agitate for his return and restoration of his claim to the throne. In 1851, Kosoko made his turn to Lagos and launched another attempt to seize the throne. This time, he was successful and Atikoye was disposed and exiled. Kosoko's reign as Oba of Lagos was marked by his, effort, um, by his efforts to consolidate his power and assert his authority over the kingdom. He continued to be involved in the slave trade and maintained a close tie with the Brazilian community in Lagos. He also strengthened his ties with other Yoruba kingdoms, including Abikuta and Ibadan. However, Kosovo's reign was marked by his opposition to British colonialism. In 1851, the British signed a treaty treaty with Lagos that gave them the right to intervene with the country's and kingdom's affairs. Kosoko fiercely resisted British interference in Lagos and continued to assert his independence. He expanded trade relations and Kosovo. He expanded trade relations. He also established trade relations with Europeans, such as the Portugal, France, Portugal's, France, um, French and um, Brit- um, Britons, I mean British, which brought significant economic developments to Lagos. He also established trade um, relations with other um, African kingdoms and helped to develop a thriving trade network. Reformed, he also reformed the legal system, um, built infrastructure, and encouraged education. He strengthened the military, fostered and cultural and artistic development, which were all the things he did in his reign. But all these good things had to end, and soon, uh, uh, Kosoko was exiled from Lagos in 1851, following a series of conflicts with the British colonial authorities. He continued to lead the resistance against British colonialism from his base in Epe, mobilizing support from other Oba leaders and launching attacks on British positions in Lagos. Now, Kosoko's legacy as a resistance leader had been celebrated since his death in, 19, in I mean, 19, 1865, particularly among Yoruba people. In 1872, the British formally recognized his son, Uyekan, the, the Oba of Lagos, effectively ending Kosoko's claim to the throne. However, Kosoko's influence on Yoruba culture and politics continued long after his death. In the early 20th century, Yoruba nationalist movements often looked to Kosoko as the symbol of resistance and colonialism as a model of Yoruba independence. 
Today, many people in Lagos still regard Kosoko as the true Oba of Lagos, and his legacy remains an important part of Yoruba your, your history and culture and African history as a whole. His resistance to colonialism continues to inspire and inform the struggle for independence and equality in Nigeria and beyond. Kosoko's legacy as a resistance leader has been celebrated in Nigeria and beyond. He is seen as a symbol of resistance to British um, independence and uh, colonialism. However, his reign was also marked by controversies and problems, including his alleged involvement in the slave trade, which was one of the main reasons um, why the British removed him from the throne. Additionally, some Yoruba leaders accused Kosoko of mismanaging the, Yurki, the uh, kingdom's resources and neglecting the welfare of his people. His resistance against the British colonialism also led to the loss of many lives and the destruction of property in Lagos. Despite these controversies, Kosovo, Kosoko determined to defend the independence of his people and legacy as a fighter for their struggle, and it continues to inspire and inform the struggle for independence and equality in Nigeria today. Despite his accomplishments, we all recognize his flaws and controversies. So let me, so le please leave a comment below on exactly what do you think of him? Do you think he's a good person, a bad person? I, I would be pleased to have discussions with you in the comment section. Overall, Nigeria's history is filled with fascinating stories of great rulers, powerful kingdoms, and cultural and, artist and artistic achievements. Through exploring these stories, we gain a better and deeper understanding of Nigeria's complex past and we gain contributions. Um, we understand the contributions it made to the world. If you guys are interested in learning more about Nigerian history, please follow me wherever you get me from, where I'll be sharing stories about the people and events that have shaped this remarkable country. Together, we can discover and um, um, we can discover and petrify and increase the vibrant history of Nigeria and gain a deeper um, appreciation for the country's enduring legacy. Thank you for listening so much and I hope you all have a great day.